Well, guys, we're back here with our brand new to us 6NZ Caterpillar engine. We have got less than 12 days to get this thing put together and in the pulling truck and at a tractor pull at the Hillsborough County Fair, November 11th and 12th. Our friends over there, Mr. Caparelli, is putting that event on, and there's going to be a few semis. So we've got our engine here. We've got some parts laid out from PDI and other places like that. But before we start putting all this new stuff on here, we've got to tear off everything we don't need and get it ready for all the nice new pretty stuff on here. We've got some parts from Caterpillar. Something to point out down here is this is a front sump engine, which is usually for a truck that has a backward set axle. But since we have a long nose, we got to swap it to a rear sump style oil pan. So we got a brand new oil pan, all kinds of stuff. But before we get to doing all that, we got to tear everything off before we put anything different on. So that's what we're going to be doing today is tearing this thing completely down to the bare bones that we need to start installing the new parts. So let's get to it. So before we get into doing all the Caterpillar stuff, I want to remind you all, we're giving away Blue Collar the Cab Over and $5,000 in cash, $100 bills. So go to brucewilsonshop.com. Every dollar spent gets you one entry, whether it be a t-shirt, a hat. Dude, such a clean hat. Mystery boxes, stickers, all kinds of stuff over at brucewilsonshop.com. If you enter to win and take home, you could be driving away in old Blue Collar right here, the classic one of the most popular, if not the most popular cab over on YouTube. You have till December 8th at midnight, guys. So first things first, we're gonna get to pulling this turbocharger and manifold off here. This turbo will actually fit our toter home out there, the Pete with the B model cat in it. This will bolt right on there and be a much better upgrade than the old school charger that's on there, and it's brand new. So we're gonna roll a time lapse. We haven't run time lapses in forever and get to pulling this manifold and turbo, and maybe a few other things off. We'll be right back. There it is, one exhaust manifold removed. We'll set it down because it might be worth something. But I want to show you all something because I'm getting happier by the minute I was tearing this engine down. Look, we'll pop these uh, inserts out right here. That cylinder head is brand new, dude. Look at that. Brand new. Dude, we definitely hit the jackpot. There was a lot of skepticism on this engine, like how cheap we got it and stuff like that. It's never been ran. It's literally brand new. So we're gonna replace all these gaskets and stuff, obviously. Uh, the PDI manifold comes with a whole brand new installation kit and stuff. Um, along with, uh, we gotta get this stud out right here. Something like that, right quick. But, uh, why don't I just put those two nuts out? Hmm. These are garbage. Right there. Right there. They're right there. Huh? Oh, they're on that stud still. These are what I'm looking for right here, son. They're sunny boy. So, gonna get the rest of these off, get them cleaned out. But look, brand new. Deal. So after we sold our other engine to our buddy Wade, sold the factory injectors out of here. Guys, I literally have this engine for free. <laughs> like I sold the other engine, uh, sold the injectors that were in here. We have the turbo, which we could probably sell for like 1500 bucks at least. Then we'd be ahead, but we're gonna use that for another project. So we're way ahead on this project as of right now so we're doing good um our friends at pdi unfortunately don't offer a big turbo like we need for competition use they offer a manifold and other great products like that so the uh turbo will be getting from the guys over at weimer turbos i talked to uh jerry martin he uh i mailed the ecm to him he's doing his uh specialty to the ecm turning it up giving it all the horse spurs um, and he suggested a Weimar Turbo. So we'll have the Turbo and an ECM sometime into this week, beginning of next week. Super pumped about that. Uh-oh. This ain't good. This ain't good. Come out of your home. So we're just going to work our way around the engine. We don't need this here alternator. I'm sorry, air compressor. AC compressor. We don't need this AC compressor. So this boy's coming off. Um, 
We probably should find some new bearings for that. What do you say? So maybe we'll pull that off, see if there's a replaceable bearing I can order. Uh, we got our fan hub and stuff like that. We're going to put on the front. I think all is one, all as one piece. So we don't need to take that off right now. Um, we'll keep working our way around. We got a new AC air, air compressor because that one's broken. But let's get this AC compressor off of here first. We'll go from there. Okay, so we got our air compressor off of there. Up next, we need to get all this wiring off of here. So, oh, I lost my glasses. I got a brand new engine harness. I figure, you know, we're just going to invest, make this thing nice. And plus, it's cut right here from where the forklift had a date with it. Oh. This thing fell off the back of a truck. So, we're going to get this whole entire wire harness cut loose, removed off of here. I'm just so pumped that this thing has a brand new engine head on it. Cylinder head. Someone's going to say, you don't know what you're talking about, dude. It's been so long because we've, like, I've done it, like engine work and stuff. I don't know if I remember how to do all this stuff. It is kind of fun though, right? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Ryan's first time. <laughs> I've been through this a couple times. Yeah. All right. All right, one more big intake manifold piece off of there. Where that boy fell and something punctured it there. Ooh. Brand new cylinder head. I'm so pumped about this. Look inside here. It's all brand new. It's so pretty. It's so just nice and brand new. Like, echo. <laughs> so you would think, hey, maybe it's reman. It's been hot tanks, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you look in there, you can see the valves and all that stuff in there. Mm -hmm. They're all brand new. And valve guides, everything's brand new. So, very happy about that. Next up, we got our wiring harness off of here. Um, we're gonna start removing some of these fuel lines and you'll understand why in a few seconds because we've got from a, a pure flow company that makes a bigger fuel line kit for this thing we're gonna be installing. So all these fuel lines are coming off. But before we do that, I'm gonna go and get this ACE air compressor off of here because as you can see, this thing is wompy. It's all catawampus, it's broken. Never mind. I thought it was gonna come off of there. But we gotta unbolt it the right way. Dude, that ain't good. Lots of broken parts and pieces, which is terrible because that air compressor sounds like it's still good. The only thing that I'm worried about is right in here. Maybe it pulled away from the block. I don't know, but look at that bolt out. It's like all foobard right there. See that? Yeah. I don't look good at all. I don't know if we can pull it out. I guess if we take the idler gear off of there, but I don't really want to mess with the timing. But this is a steel plate. So I think the bolt maybe is just bent. Yeah, that boy bent, bent. See it spinning crooked? Yeah. Hmm. Let's see it. What do you think? Do we just leave it in there? Or just put a new bolt in it? I don't know. Do it the right way. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll cross that bridge here in a couple minutes. We don't have an air compressor yet. Yet. So. Uh, okay, air compressor's off. Let's get these fuel lines off of here. Mainly, we're gonna start with this guy. Oh, he just got tools scattered everywhere. Wrong size. Five sixteenths. Here we go. Of course. Of course. Of course. So now, you're probably wondering, Bruce, why are you taking the lower valve cover off? Well, we're replacing the valve cover harness uh, that's down inside here with a brand new one. So we're gonna pull it off to replace that valve cover harness the right way. You gotta pull it off to do it the right way. So I don't have a new gasket to go in here. So we're gonna be real careful with this one, which it should shouldn't have any issues. Cause it's, oh, we got one more bolt down here. Won't be heavy. It's, it's gonna be stuck to it, that's for sure. I 
I don't know what all that is, but it looks pretty cool. So, our harness is held in by these metal pieces here, which is why we had to pull it out of the truck or out of the engine to get to them. So now I've got them all pried away from these Allen screws. We'll uh, get this thing out of here and I will work on installing the new one because now we've got it just about torn down where we want it because we can get the cam put in here in a couple minutes, uh, get the rocker assemblies put back on it. There we have it. I think we gotta split all these things apart. What a what a turd this is to do. Hmm. And uh, get this wiring harness snaked out of here. But there is something I wanna show you right here, Ryan. You can't hardly see it. But on this year engine, it says made in the USA. Isn't that crazy? Made in the USA. Maybe it's USA China. I think go. there is a USA China somewhere. Wouldn't that be convenient? Yeah. So you could say made in USA, but it's actually USA. USA. USA make us some dinner. <laughs> Funny. I got dinner at home waiting for me. All right. See if we can see. Oh, shoot. Where are our cutters? Cutters go. You see our cutters anywhere? Yeah, right there. Those aren't cutters, but they'll work. You can do Boom. it. Boom. Need all this out of here, I think that's the only way to get it out. Pretty sure, yeah, it's gotta be. You know what? We're doing this the hard way. What are we doing? Take our snip snips here. And we're gonna go cut it out. Snip. Snip. Maybe not so fast of a snip, but hey yeah. yeah. All right, one old wiring harness out of our lower gasket or our lower valve cover housing here. Uh, we're gonna set this over here on the way because I'd like to clean it up a little bit before we shove it back in this here motor fuel system. All right, so we got one fuel line loose, right? Yes, we do. Add a 11 sixteenths here. That boy ain't playing, is it? It's all that paint. What else do we have left to tear off this thing? Wait, do you see anything else? Uh, Any fuel line off. That thing you were saying earlier. What thing? This little disc or whatever. Disc? <laughs> what are you talking thing. about? This little thing right here. <laughs> A pulley? Or it was something. That little there. disc right there? We gotta take that little <laughs> disc off. Shoot. I think we're pretty much tore down there, son. All right. Well, I guess we can, uh, I don't know where to start. We have so much to do in such little time. Okay, so I don't understand how or why these things work. Maybe someone comment down the video, but why Caterpillar has these, but these are like a cylinder insert that go in there just like that on each one of these cylinders. And this is a, a course of product that PDI, whenever you buy a manifold, you can get an install kit from them also. We're gonna slide all these right up inside here in this cylinder head. Maybe if I can get it past this here uh, doohickey here. Come on, there we go, going oh, home. And uh, we're gonna get installing the new studs that are supplied with the manifold. Oh shoot, I mean the manifold install kit. What are you doing in that thing? Things are working out. Get off of me. All right. Now, here's the fun part. Oh, you know what? Actually, since this is one of those there three-piece manifolds, we can install a piece at a time. Dude, that's actually pretty slick willy. So we can install the first one up here in the front first. Get that stud put in there. It's quite the stud here. 
Oh, get out of here. <laughs> right there. Get another one started in here. It's nice stainless steel studs too, eh? Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very. We'll get all these installed back inside here. PDAI, boom. Best in the bidness. The bidness. Oh. Oh. I guess we're gonna reuse these boys right here. So on this very front one, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and put that on there first and then get it snaked up in there and start threading it in there. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to use some never sees. Um, maybe when you're screwing them in the head here, uh, but we're not, because I don't have any, unfortunately, at this exact point in time. So we're gonna get the rest of these studs installed on here, get the rest of the manifold put on there, and boom. We're almost there. There you have it guys, got the manifold all installed on here. Definitely a little bit of a chore and having to work around all these things, but it's on there nonetheless. Uh, we're gonna go to the other side now. You know, I think we should just go ahead and put the cam in it and get the front cover buttoned up. Let's work on cleaning this engine here. Get all these oil galleys cleaned out real good. And uh, these cam journals from where it's been sitting. We'll get the cam slid in there, get it timed back up where it's supposed to be. Get it uh, torqued down to torque speckums. Oh. And uh, go from there. We'll get all this cleaned up. A little dirty in here. Get all this dirt and sand out of the top of the engine. Hey, Ryan, I thought you'd do a better job cleaning than that. Jeez. I didn't touch Jeez, this, dude. Before. All right. We're almost there. So I just spoke to a friend of mine that's been helping me with some little things here on, on uh, building this here engine. He said, you can torque these head studs down to 330 foot pounds. So let's see where they're at now. Okay, he's on the pry against. Oh. Well, they're right at 300 now. You got a little so ways to pull get... it a little bit further. Well, they're already tight. Well, they're already, what? 330 something there. They said it need to be at 330. It was like 307. Yeah, let's check another let's check another random one. Should have a much bigger torque wrench, honestly. Yeah, there it is. Oh, there you go, it's like 324. They're already pretty tight. Alright, well, they're already tight. Got us a new snap on torque wrench. Because the last one took a dump. Don't be a little wussy boy. Pick that thing up. Oh, there's, the there's an impact in there. Oh. I'm looking for that impact. I can only weighs 20 pounds. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is a real camshaft, boys. All right. All right. <sighs> Ain't you afraid of that thing just snapping? Well, um... We need to lubricate it with something so it's not dry in there when it starts up. So, I'm out of breath. We'll wipe it down real good with a clean, dirty rag. And uh, see about getting it installed in here. This is an 800 horsepower camshaft. Some people said, oh, I'll do a thousand, do a thousand. But it seems the 800 horsepower is a better fuel lobe for fueling. So, Alright, let me find some oil. Oh, you like that? <laughs> Don't ever say that to me again. <laughs> Getting some uh, lube here on this here camshaft. Now, I'm going to try to slide it in there without messing anything up. The problem is that it's a 
it's almost a two-person job to not mess it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some assembly lube on these uh, cam lope cam bearings in here. We'll get it put in there. Okay, one down. Let's go to the next. Oh, food bar and these bearings up. One, two, three. Why aren't you helping, dude? You gonna stand around all day? No, it looks like you got it. Looks like you know what you're doing. I mean, I kind of do. According to the YouTube dictionary. Oh. The book of YouTubes. Hey. Okay. Problem is, you're not careful, this thing will fall on your <laughs> fingers. <laughs> oh, God. I'm like a flat finger. Yeah, and you, you'll have one real quick. <laughs> oh. I can help you. It falls and it sits on the bearings. Something that's not lined up correctly. There we go. <laughs> All right, camshaft is in. Now I gotta find our cam gear and the cam retainer plate and all that good stuff. It's around here somewhere. All right, party people, we've got our cam gear here. We're gonna get it lined up with our eyebrow gear here first. And then kind of lay it up in here to position. Try to get some bolts lined up. I kind of put the cam right where I knew it kind of needed to be because um, it's got that alignment pin on it. And we've got everything pretty much lined up right where it should be. So we're in pretty good shape here already. All right, I got my torque wrench broke out. We'll get all these bolts put in here and get it torqued down. Shoot. Wilson Speed, baby, right here. Shoot. New YouTube channel. Start building engines for everybody. Build me a Hellcat. <laughs> <laughs> me and Hellcats don't get along. <laughs> I've noticed. <laughs> there it goes. Finally falling into its home. All right, according to Just Answer on the internet, it says 175 foot pounds is what the torque is on these bolts. So we'll do a crisscross lug pattern here, like we're tightening up a wheel on a car. Capiche, kaboom, bang. Thank you, ma'am. Wham, bam. All right, we're gonna double check them all. There you have it. Cam bolts all tightened up. One camshaft installed. We can get our cam cover put back on here. This thing wiped down and good and clean. Clean, dirty red. You ever see those like pictures of these guys like on the side of the interstate and like other countries and stuff? Just in the dirt rebuilding an engine. Hmm. Mind blowing to me, right? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. You're like, no way. But you know what? They'll rebuild that engine and that thing will run for a million miles. There's gonna be some people in the comments watch already and be like, ain't no way I'd have him build an engine for me. No, oh, no <laughs> way. Ain't no way I'd have Bruce build an engine for me. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. You know, we should get that powder coat a different color. Chrome. One day. One day. Chrome? Chrome? Chrome don't get you home. Did you know that? Yeah, everything in my car is black. 
All right, now we've got our camshaft installed. We'll get our injectors installed here. Get some uh, lubrication on here. Oh. Get our injector hold down tool on here. We'll start, start right here. Now, the only concern I've got is can we put the valve cover on with the injectors on? I think we can. But these have to go on with the injector like that. And then you <coughs> get the push in. You just and just <coughs> down in there. Yeah. Random extension in there. A little bit of spoilage on my hand here. Jeez. Down here and down here in the back forty. Holy! Is it in there? It's going in. Just some new rings. There it went. All right. Oh shoot, dude! Dude, an RC call. That's you, all <laughs> You won't drink it off there. You're Show right me how much you love this engine. <laughs> All right. Get the rest of these injectors put in here. Oh. And, uh. Oh. Ryan, shut your mouth. <laughs> Whatever. I'm new here. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get these rockers set onto their home here, carefully, without losing a finger here. What's going on? What is going on here? What is it? There we go. There we go, boom. All right, there's one set of rockers sitting down now we got to put the jakes on top of it because we're still gonna be street driving this truck here and there yeah street drive all right so i'm gonna put these back where they came from someone did label them one two and three and i put two right here in the wrong spot so i can pick it up out of there and put it right here <clears throat> Now, let's uh, go get number three. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, here's number two. These are our jakes. Boom. All right. Let's make the brat brat. I gotta get a parts washer like soon. It's in here. Huh? We have it. Oh, that's right. We do. Where is it? Uh, somewhere, oh, it's right there. Why ain't it hooked up yet, dude? Because we were just trying to get the trailer in. Oh, here's excuses. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so easy to run an overhead on this thing without this upper valve cover on. Oh, my goodness. You know how to do that, Ryan? When he said overhead, it just went right over my head. <laughs> He's got jokes. <laughs> All right, our rockers torque to 80 foot pounds. So we're gonna get all these torqued down. And uh, then we're gonna do an overhead. Ooh, that boy a little dry. Okay. Start in the center, work our way out. Get all these torqued the correct way.
I'm sure there is some specific torque sequence, but I always start in the center and then work my way out. So, we've got these other two done. We're gonna start on doing our overhead, and I'll try to give you guys as much advice from what I've learned on how to do overheads on Caterpillar engines. All right, folks, what we're about to do now is go ahead and run an overhead back out here this morning. We're gonna do 15 thousandths on our intake valves and 30 thousandths on our exhaust. Right now, the engine's currently set a top dead center on the compression stroke. So uh, we're gonna get these things, these boys set where they belong here. And what we're gonna do is we want just a little bit of resistance here. We don't want too little, too much. We want sliding resistance onto our feeler gauge here. So we'll get it set where we want it, and then we're gonna hold hold our uh, piece there and put the torque to it. Yeah, it's a little too tight there. We're gonna do every single valve just like this, rotate the engine, and uh, go to the next. Folks, I put a little bit of a damper on our engine build here. This fitting right here where it screws into the fuel filter housing didn't really want to tight, tighten up. It just kept turning, which means the threads are a little a little stripped out. Um, so I'm having Lake. He's out. Went and bought a tractor. We're going to bring back here and sell because we got to get back in the tractor business. Um, so he's going by Cat and I guess new fuel filter, oil filter, new fuel filter housing. They've got these over sitting at a caterpillar in tampa and then i noticed this cam sensor here right getting the wiring harness put on here look at that them wires are all bare we cannot have that so we're gonna stop and get a new cam sensor too so we're gonna hold off on finishing this boy probably for the next few days till we get everything here and get this thing ready to put back in the truck so we got a ton done valve covers are all on overheads ran overhead is ran new fuel pump put in here manifold on this thing is pretty much ready to go other than just buttoning up a few small things and getting it ready to set in the truck i just spoke to our buddy jerry martin he's gonna have our ecm back here maybe tomorrow or monday but that's not gonna hold us from getting the engine put in the truck and then we should have that brand new weimer turbo to go on our pdi manifold sometime next week also but something else did show up today i told you guys we were getting them for the cab over and they're right here right and back up and get the camera out of my face look at this we got some brand new dual stackamas what? for the cab over. Told you guys we were doing dual stacks again. And that we are gonna be putting some stack flappers on it. So in the next couple videos, you'll be seeing us put brand new stacks on blue collar once again getting that boy in tippity top tip tip shape so with that being said if you haven't got entered to win blue collar or the cab over yet you definitely should by going to brucewilsonshop.com every one dollar spent gets you one entry to win the cab over and five thousand bucks in cash guys it's easy as that you have till december 8th at midnight hope you're pumped about us getting this caterpillar put in the pulling truck going to do some sled pulling with it and uh we got a lot of work done on blue collar before december 8th a lot of work. If you guys enjoyed it, we'll see you later. Peace.